Digital wallets are a means to harvest your data and will be used by the government to track your location, your transactions, and everything about you. If you've been paying attention to digital ID and social credit, you may have noticed that digital wallets are being discussed. So what do they have to do with a social credit score? First, let's understand digital wallets themselves. A digital wallet is a way to digitize your physical information, such as your credit cards, concert tickets, travel cards, and even more things. Instead of having to carry the physical cards in your wallet, you can put them on your phone's digital wallet. The wallets can then be used for things like boarding passes on an airplane, concert ticket entry, or temporary passes that you might need to use for a car park or similar. Instead, you would previously have needed to print out a barcode or a QR code to present at the physical location. You don't need to do that if you have a digital wallet. And these wallets already exist today and you probably use them. The two most common wallets are Apple Pay and the Google Wallet. This means that if you're at a physical store, you can tap your phone and use any of your preloaded debit cards instead of carrying around your physical cards and making it extremely convenient for any of your purchases. But I'm not sure we fully understand or grasp what's happening under the hood when we're using a Google Wallet or an Apple Pay to make these transactions for convenience. And as the famous saying goes, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So who's benefiting from these free systems? And why is the government in the UK suddenly interested in getting a digital wallet? I think first, we need to understand how a digital wallet works. It seems pretty self-explanatory. A digital card or something in your digital wallet is simply digitized so that when you go to use it, instead of using the physical form, you're using the digital form. And you would use that to make your payment in an online store or a physical store itself. Specifically, when you add your card into Google Wallet, it isn't really your card number, CVV, and expiry date that's being created. It's actually a tokenized version of the card given to your wallet, Google Wallet or Apple Pay, by your bank provider and performing some interesting technical background work to try and make it secure. The process is kind of complicated, to be honest, and there's been a lot of thought that's been put into the process to make it reasonably secure. Each one of the wallets does store this type of information slightly differently, and some are more secure than others. If you want a really detailed explanation of how the tokenization works, probably check out another video because I want to focus on the social control aspect in this video. So the result of your card being inside something like a Google wallet means that Google is just the middleman between the transaction. So you open up the wallet, you pay, but the payment is actually still between your bank and whoever you're paying. So what do they get out of it? Unlike Visa and PayPal, Google's not taking a small fee or charging you a small percentage of whatever's occurring during that transaction. They're doing it for free. So why do they offer a service for free? Well, like most of Google's other services, we know that they're collecting data and they're getting information out of these transactions that they think are extremely important. So they offer the service for free. And here's a list of the full data that Google outlines in its privacy policy. I know it's a lot for one slide, but please bear with me. And they might collect any of this information during the transaction. It's all listed in their privacy policy with the link down the bottom. But I think the most important things are the payment method, the description of the payment, and the access to your balances associated with the wallet itself. I think it's pretty scary how much information they're taking. If Google's the middleman between the transaction, then they must be handling and collecting some of that data between the bank and the merchant. Google claims it doesn't sell this data, but I assume that they use it all across their other platform advertising techniques. Like if you do a Google search and you've recently bought something, they might take that into consideration to target you for a specific ad. Now we understand why the Google Wallet exists. It's a real example of how a digital wallet can collect your payment information, your location, and other information. But it can also be used for transport cards, tickets to concerts, and other types of events. And if a digital wallet was a complete replacement for your physical wallet, whoever hosts and controls that digital wallet can see where you're going, how much you're spending, and what type of things you're purchasing. I believe there are many aspects to a social credit score system. And having a digital wallet would allow the government to maintain persistent data about your transactions and locations.
The other core components include the central bank digital currency, online censorship, facial recognition, and digital ID. I believe this control system will continue to mature and I'll add things in here, but in an Australian context, many already exist in their infancy. So you might be asking yourself, why would the government want to know this information? Well, if you said something naughty on the internet, instead of trying to request location data from the telcos or the banks, they would just use your digital wallet information to track your immediate location. Or if they wanted to understand your carbon's credit score, you wouldn't need to get this information from the banks or whoever's tracking your transactions, but instead they could track it directly across your accounts in your wallet. After all, the banks are already tracking this information. An issue with how banks now view our accounts. Here in Australia, both the Commonwealth Bank, our biggest listed company, and Westpac have a banking function where your carbon footprint can be tracked. The technology allows the bank's retail customers to view their monthly carbon footprint with a comparison to the national average. Your transactions are recorded and customers can then see a breakdown of their carbon emissions data grouped into everyday spending categories. So imagine a world where the government creates a digital wallet and it has all of the features of your Google wallet, but you could also hold your digital ID in here as well. So you'd be using it for payments, for your travel, for pretty much everything in your life. Everyone in the country would then be using a single centralized platform that the government has access to, to see all of this information. They don't have to go to the telcos and they don't have to go to the banks and request this information because they already hold it. So let's go back to the scenario that I sort of hinted at earlier. You post a joke online, the post was reported to the e-safety officer, who is the person who can sense the internet in Australia, and they've decided that it is an offensive post. So the police look at your digital wallet data and find out it, that you're on vacation in another state because of the plane ticket that you stored in your digital wallet and the payment for the hotel that you just made. The police investigated the facial recognition cameras in the area, and because of your digital ID, your face was easy to find. They track you down to a local shopping center where you're reading a book. Or maybe instead of the police coming and physically finding you, they just send you a notification to your digital ID app. Your punishment? Well, might not be jail. Instead, your total allowance of carbon emissions this year has been decreased by 20%. This means no more holidays because you don't have enough credits to fly. You'll have to take public transport more often instead of driving your car. And finally, a need to lower your meat consumption for the next year. Your friends no longer want to hang out with you because your social credit score has dropped so low it might affect them. And your community treats you as an outcast. This is obviously a made up scenario and I could be completely wrong, but wrong in which direction? Is it going to be worse? or is it going to be better than what I've described? I get some criticism in the comments about not giving Google and the other private companies a hard time, even though they're sort of doing the same things that I'm criticizing the government's going to do. But I think there's a key differentiator. The profit motive or the motive of Google is for profits. They're trying to sell you more things that you don't need and create more money off your existence by you buying things off their platform or using their platforms. Whereas the key differentiator is that the government will use this for social control. That's the key difference. Um, we don't already exist in a society where the government has access to do these things. We already do live in a society where Google's already doing these things. And I was just a kid when all of this started. So I didn't have time to speak about it back then. And I'm using one of Google's platforms to talk to you right now. So who am I to say? <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the government getting access to a digital wallet and storing all of your information, I think is pretty clear outlined in this video that it could lead down a path of social credit control. It's a big system that they're putting in place and it's happening across the board all over the world. Um, and I think Australia is going to just use their digital ID platform to host a digital wallet rather than just the IDs, which it's supposed to be for right now. If you got it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. If you could subscribe, that would be fantastic. Um, please like the video, please comment, please share it with your friends. It really does help. Thank you very much for watching.